G'day. I wanted to mention that Victory Churches International is really based on the fivefold ministry gifts. And if you turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 8 to 13, and read this with me. Therefore, he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Now this, as ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fulfill all things. And he gave himself gave gifts to men some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, uh, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So now let's join Pastor Brad T. Dewar, who is a member of Victory Churches International team of leaders. Hi, my name is uh, Pastor Brad Dewar. I'm one of the founding directors along with Drs. George and Hazel Hill of the Victory Churches of Canada. And I've been involved right from the beginning in helping to put down on paper some of the structures and some of the policies of our Victory Churches. Now, if you're already familiar with uh, with how we do things within Victory, then you know that we're organized as a group of churches within each nation into regions, which are then organized into districts under the leadership of a national leader, a national apostolic leader. Uh, what you may not know is that that structure grew directly out of some five-fold ministry thinking. So right in the very beginning of our movement, when we were just starting to grow as a group of churches in Canada, we believed very strongly in the idea of the five-fold ministry. And uh, that was one of the reasons why we began to form Victory Churches in the first place, was to release that. Now, the five-fold ministry, of course, I'm referring to Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, let me read that for you. In verse 11, Paul, the apostle, writing, says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And so right away in this passage that I'm sure many of you are very familiar with already, we see uh, five, a five-fold promise, you might be able to say. Five things that this passage promises will be a result of the ministry of these five different ministry gifts. Number one, it says the saints will be equipped. Number two, it says there will be unity in the body. It will bring the whole body of Christ into greater unity. Number three, it says that the church will mature. It will grow up into the fullness of Christ. That's maturity. It also says, uh, fourthly, that there will be a stability and a balance. It will cause uh, stability in the church. And then lastly, of course, it will cause growth growth in the church, that there will be an, a multiplication and an expansion of the church on its, in its mission to the world as a result of the fivefold ministry. So we understood that implicitly in the beginning of our Victory Churches, that uh, the, the release of the fivefold ministry could cause the, the full release of God's plan and purpose for the church to work much, much more effectively. And so we sat down and began to, to discuss and pray and seek how we could release the fivefold in a greater way. We had, I suppose you could call, a five-fold premise when we put Victory Churches together. Uh, and that, those five uh, beliefs or ideas that we had were these, that, that these five gifts are a valid part of God's plan for the church through all ages, and that includes today. 
They didn't pass away once scripture was complete. They didn't pass away once the last of the original 12 apostles uh, passed away. But uh, God set these gifts in the church for the building of the church, for the equipping of the saints until the age of the church was complete. So we believe these five gifts, number one, were a valid part of the ministry of the church today. We believed that there are individuals in every church who are called to these different fivefold ministries. We believe that each of these fivefold gifts activates or, or uh, equips a different portion of the body of Christ. If you have a pastor, there's a certain percentage or portion of uh, of the members of the church who are going to be mobilized and, and uh, uh, motivated by that gift, but the others not so much. Where, where when you have an evangelist who's actively ministering, that will touch a different segment of the body of Christ and mobilize and activate them. And so in order to fully mobilize the whole church, you need to fully mobilize the whole fivefold. And that was, that was our, our fourth premise on that, is that re, the release of the fivefold, the release of the whole fivefold, releases the whole church to reach the whole world. And then fifthly, we believe that these fivefold gifts were intended to operate synergistically, in other words, together, that they weren't made to just go off individually and do their own thing in isolation, but that their five different gifts were meant to operate in conjunction together. They not only minister to different portions of the body, but they also stir up the anointing of God within each other and bring it out to its best. So, those are some things that we held just as part of our belief, studying the book of Ephesians, understanding these gifts had been set in the church, and we sat down and began to say, how could we do this? We could say that out of this grew kind of a, a, a five-fold purpose, and uh, part of our overall purpose to reach, teach, and mobilize was also to explore and embrace a five-fold theology, to really understand the all that the Bible teaches about the operation of these five different ministry gifts. Secondly, to, to identify and train fivefold leaders. That's been a huge part of everything we've done. It's one of the reasons that we uh, instituted Victory Bible College and many different training mechanisms and training uh, 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 seminars, conferences, opportunities like that, uh, mentoring programs and so forth, all designed to help identify and to develop fivefold gifting in new leaders. Uh, thirdly, our fivefold purpose was to fully release these fivefold gifts into full time ministry and full time leadership. And then, fourthly, to build an apostolic movement on a fivefold uh, foundation or a fivefold structure. In other words, we wanted to incorporate our understanding of the fivefold ministry in how we organized and uh, how we structured the movement so we could continue to grow and to expand. And then fifthly, of a five-fold purpose within Victory, it was to not only build that kind of a movement, but to use it as a model to show uh, the greater church all around the world the potential that lies within the development of the five-fold ministry. And so these were just foundational things that were part of our understanding. And so we began to, to work at how to recognize these gifts. How do you, what are the identifying features uh, of an apostle, of a prophet, of an evangelist, of a pastor or a teacher? How are they differentiated? Uh, how does their fruit differ one from another? And uh, uh, what are their strengths? What are their respective weaknesses? And how do we need to compensate or complement uh, those giftings when they're in operation? And how do they best work together? And all of those things have been part of what we've been working out in the development of our Victory Churches in Canada, and of course that becomes a model in many ways for Victory Churches in all around the world to, uh, to learn from, uh, and of course we want to learn from uh, everywhere that we can learn as, uh, as well. However, recognizing people's gifting is only one thing. 
it's, uh, it's important that we do that. It's important that we, we understand how to recognize, uh, for, for example, uh, an evangelistic gifting as apart from people who are just um, soul winners. Uh, how do we recognize uh, the, the fivefold gift of an apostle in someone's life uh, rather than just someone who's uh, um, you know, called to be a servant in the ministry in some way. So we it, recognizing those gifts is essential, but to fully release the fivefold ministry to do what God intended to do requires something more. It's not enough to just recognize those. We realized that in order to release these gifts, we had to find a way to put them into full-time ministry. You might be called to be an apostle, but if you're busy being uh, a plumber uh, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, then you're not really putting much of your gifting to work uh, in building the church. You might be called to be a prophet, but if you're, if you're stuck behind a desk in an office tower uh, doing accounting uh, hours and hours every week, you're not really releasing that gifting fully for the equipping of the church. And so we thought we need to find a way to release all fivefold, various fivefold giftings into full-time ministry. And uh, as we worked through that process, we realized that uh, most churches aren't big enough or uh, well-financed enough to be able to hire, in, in the majority of churches, any more than one full-time leader. They're only ever going to hire one senior pastor uh, unless they grow to two, three, four hundred people and beyond. Uh, the finances in most cases just aren't there to hire multiple staff. Uh, multiple staff does allow you to hire various fivefold giftings so that you get uh, a greater representation of them, but most churches can't do that. And so that being one of the limitations, we said, well, the only way we're going to release all these fivefold gifts is to put them into senior pastor positions. And so even though we may call them a senior pastor because they are the senior leader in a local church, we knew and we understood that their actual gifting may not necessarily be that of a pastor. They may be an apostle. They may be a teacher. They may be a prophet. Uh, but by putting them into that senior pastor's office, we found a way to give full-time release to them. Well, as you can see, of course, uh, if these five gifts are meant to work together, then having uh, an apostle in that church way over there and a pastor in another church way over there and an evangelist in that other church way over there doesn't give them much opportunity to work together. And so there, that's where we began to say, we, well, uh, if we're putting them into those positions, we need to find a way to have those gifts work in conjunction with one another. And out of that understanding and implementation of our fivefold ministry, um, that's where we developed the idea of a regional plan. And so uh, once we, we understood that we had to put people into full-time ministry, of course, that took some commitment. We sat down as a, group, a small group of churches here in Canada, and we said, if we're going to release these people into ministry, um, we need to work together. No one church has all the finances necessary to start new churches and put new people into ministry just to release fivefold gifts into, into full-time service. We need to work together to do that. And so out of that was born our affiliation agreement where we made, number one, a commitment to fivefold teamwork. And secondly, we made a financial commitment and we said all of our churches will tithe, biblical principle, to tithe out of the general income of the church into a central fund that could then be used to finance and to fund the launching of new churches and the release of more and more leaders into full-time ministry. And that was where we initially formed the Victory Churches of Canada was by making the commitment together to this idea of teamwork in releasing the fivefold ministry. And so, uh, as I was saying, Having uh, one gift in this church and one gift in that church and one in the other church meant that if we were to draw upon that synergistic uh, energy of the fivefold ministry, we had to get those leaders together on a regular basis. 
And that's where we begin to say, hey, we need to form our churches as we grow, as we add more and more churches uh, all across the nation. We need to keep them grouped in small groups that are in close enough proximity to each other that those leaders can get together on a regular basis for, for uh, fellowship and for uh, teaching and for training and for sharing and for brainstorming and dreaming and apostolically envisioning bigger things together. When you get those five-fold gifts together, there's, there's something magical that happens. They become greater than the sum of their parts. They they activate anointing in one another, and suddenly they all seem to bring more to the table. And so that's why we formed our churches into regions. Uh, since few churches could ever employ all five, that we said we can still build five-fold teamwork on a regional then rather than a local basis. And so we organized all our churches into regions, and we thought uh, too many churches in a region becomes counterproductive, just like too few churches would. And so uh, we said the optimum amount of churches, somewhere between about three or four to six or seven churches at the most, uh, can work together as a region. They, they are uh, geographically close enough together that they can meet on a, on a regular basis. In fact, many of our uh, regions meet at least four times a year where they come together overnight and spend time together as pastors and key leaders within each of those churches, building relationship with one another, training and teaching and sharing and inspiring one another, ministering, praying for one another, prophesying and speaking into each other's lives. But we also make time then just to let those gifts in, in as they interact with each other, dream big and think big, and plan big together, and start to do bigger things together as a region. And so, uh, little regions of four to six or seven churches working together. And then, of course, as, as we saw the regions begin to multiply, we went from one region to then two regions of churches. And as we continued to grow in those early days here in Canada, then three regions of churches, and then into another province where we, be, we, we founded another region of churches and then another region of churches, pretty soon we began to say, hey, uh, in order to keep these regions that work together from getting separated from each other and losing touch with each other, we need to form them into a larger group of regions, which we call the district. And then each of those districts needs to have uh, an apostolic leader over them who can touch base with each of those different regions of churches, meeting with, with them in their quarterly meetings or their regional meetings as they get together, and uh, just helping to provide uh, a bridge between all of the different regions and influencing them with their own fivefold apostolic gifting as well. So our structure, uh, where we have local churches that work together as regions and regions that work together as districts and then districts that work together as a national movement, all of that grew just out of that idea that if we could fully release the fivefold ministry, we could release the whole church to reach the whole world. And so all of that grew out of that. And uh, of course, uh, as we build a national movement uh, in, in country after country where, where there's a, a, a national apostolic leader and uh, there's enough churches to begin to form together and work together on that basis, we want to continue to uh, keep that same principle, that same fivefold principle at work all the way through. We want to continue to draw in new leaders at the grassroots level and then make clear pathways for those leaders to grow and to be trained up and to be raised up and their fivefold gifting to be recognized and developed and proved and uh, seasoned and then released into leadership uh, when they're ready into local churches and into regional oversight and into district oversight and so forth. And as each nation follows that plan and that principle, we just continue to see uh, an explosive growth potential that the fivefold ministry releases. It means that, that in conjunction with uh, other training uh, arms of the movement, like our Victory Bible College and our different Victory Conferences that we're able to, to, to come together in this nation or that nation, uh, with all of those things working together, our goal is to continue to see lots and lots of leaders raised up, uh, fivefold leaders, equipped, 
and released to do what God meant them to do. And uh, uh, that, that is why we've seen such tremendous growth around the world. And then, of course, we could take it to even a, a final level as well. And as we have a national apostolic organization in nation after nation after nation, in order to keep each of those nations in close touch with each other, then we formed the international oversight of Victory Churches International. And so that, headed up by Drs. George and Hazel Hill, is the meeting place for all of our national organizations to stay connected, uh, not only with them and with the head, but with the heart of the vision and with each other, so that there's great personal relationship uh, between our national leaders and, and many of the, the leaders under them who know uh, each other well, who know each other personally, who have that bond of connectedness. And so uh, VCI then became the meeting place where we can bring our nations together for fellowship, for inspiration, to build them up. Fellowship just meaning, hey, building that personal relationship. It's, it's one thing to have an idea and an organizational mentality, but it's another thing to have personal connection and know their names and have uh, affection for one another. That's part of the glue that holds all this together. And then inspiration, just to, to keep each other fired up about God's great big possibilities and, and to dream bigger and to reach higher and to reach farther and uh, fellowship, inspiration, training, of course, there's always lots of training we can do, not only amongst each other as national leaders, but also on upcoming and emerging leaders within each nation to continue to train and train. And again, that's where our Victory Bible College can be instrumental. But that's not enough to be just in fellowship or inspired and, and be trained. We also need to cooperate and in, in united action work together to do big things in more nations all around the world. And so there's a little bit of how um, Victory in its fivefold idea from the beginning took that idea and allowed it to shape our organization and, and, and uh, point us towards explosive global growth.